Good afternoon. Um, I'll start off by saying, uh, you know, we uh, respect the NFL and the NFLPA uh, for getting together. And what they concluded on was that we had a few plays early on in the OTA process, uh, very early on, um, and they took away an OTA on Tuesday. Uh, we found out late Monday evening, and that's when we notified uh, the media as well as the players that we weren't coming in on Tuesday. And uh, we resumed uh, practice today um, on Wednesday for an OTA, um, and that was, that was good. Um, the uh, league did not hand out fines uh, to myself or uh, to the organization uh, for that particular violation. Um, what we've done over the process of these OTAs as I said, I think maybe it was after OTA number two that we've learned how to practice bears against bears and still run full speed and be able to practice during this time, during the phase three time where there's no you know, collisions or contacts and all those things. And we've improved on that uh, severely uh, and did a nice job. And the players have done a nice job. Uh, to go back to uh, this Monday, we thought as a staff and the players would attest to this that it was our best practice uh, coming off the break, and I told those guys that. I said, that's a tribute to them, the ability to focus and study over the break, come back on a Monday, and then really do a great job of executing. Um, the offense had an outstanding day on Monday. I think I counted uh, 11 chunk passes um, and one chunk run uh, during that day, and I thought the defense today came back on Wednesday, okay, did a really nice job of executing had a lot of nice plays on the ball. You guys saw a couple of tips that were there, had some nice interceptions. Um, and today we got a lot of good situations. Um, you know, a lot of two minute situations. You guys saw a lot of those and some red zone scenarios. Uh, end of game plays, we got that as well. So it's been a real positive week for us. Um, guys are excited to be back in, in today. And uh, we got one more day tomorrow. So we're excited about that. So I'll open it up to questions. Man, when these things happen uh, with the plays that were in question, I guess. Is it a result of, I guess, the way practice is structured, what drills you guys are actually doing, or a result of players maybe just getting overzealous and then you kind of have contact that isn't necessarily planned, or is it both? I would say the latter. I would say the latter that just it's just being under control. You know, it's like I said, you know, you know be quick but not in a hurry. Uh, body control, uh, being able to stay on your feet, um, and, and knowing the tempo. And, and, the, and, we're, and those guys were are doing a good job with that. When, like, when you're alerted that there's a play that, that they don't think is, uh, it, it is fit for an OTA, and then they look at the film for later practices and see the play still there, had you tried to make changes between the first and the second and they didn't take? Did, uh, what's the process like between them seeing it in person and then them seeing it on film? You know, yeah, I think what you do as a coach, you know, during this time of year when you see something that is – uh, what you say is, you know, a little bit over the top. You bring it to their attention. You take it to the team meeting, and which I did, and you talk to them about it and say, hey, this is what we need to correct. This is what we need to do. And the guys have steadily improved on that process and are doing a really nice job at this point. Safe to say it wasn't corrected enough. Oh, safe to say it wasn't corrected enough when they saw it a second time or, or when, it was, when they saw you guys running the drill later. I'm not sure how to answer that. Yeah. Are you aware how the league, how this was brought to the league's attention? Say it again. Are you aware of how this was brought to the league's attention? I am not. I am not. Obviously, you don't want to lose a practice, but you focus so much on hustle and intensity, right? The first few letters of hits. So, is there any part of you that kind of likes to see that intensity in practice, even though even though it costs you? A well, lot? I think I stated before with that principle, with our principle that we believe in, and that that the hustle can be there, right? And it is, and you can see that. You guys are at practice. The guys run. They run on offense, they run on defense, and, man, we run. But the intensity part, the, the focus part of intensity can be there, but not the physical part until we get the pads. Once we get the pads on in training camp, that's when we're going to focus on how we play the intensity piece. Uh, that cannot be done this time of year. You know, so we're, we can do the hustle part. But, uh, so we're, we're excited where we are with that. There's guys that are flying around. They're really moving to the ball. It looks, it looks uh, fast to me. Did Braxton Jones show you something to say, hey, let's look at him? With the ones, or was that just a let's plug them in and see what it, see what it looks like? Right. So early on in the OTAs, remember we talked about the tack. You guys asked a question about the tackles, and I don't remember who what, what uh, media member it was, but 
we said, hey, we're going to move guys around and shift guys around. So it's a halfway point for us, right? So, you know, we had six practices, and then we got six or seven to go at that point when we made the switch. And we wanted to change combinations. And that's not the only combinations we've changed, you know, from tackle, you know, tackle, tackle. We've moved some receivers around. Some guys are playing X. Some guys are playing Z. We, you know, adjusted some guys on the defensive line. So we've done those things just to really find out, have a true evaluation of what's the best fit for us going forward in the training camp. Uh, we might like the other combination. We might like this combination. We might not like, you know, either one of them. Now let's go to the one here in training camp. So we'll we'll figure out what the best thing is. And that's really just more information for the coaches to find out the best what's best for the Bears. Is that the same thing with Larry Borum playing right tackle on Tevin Jenkins? Looked like he was same the today. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's the same. It's exactly the same. So we're just trying to find the best combinations of people, especially when you're look, looking at the offensive line. Who's the best five guys out there so we can succeed? And it creates competition when you do that. You know, when you're moving guys around, who can who can function at different spots? And, and who can uh, really execute. How much are pads a game changer in, for situations like that? You know, when you're in pads and full speed and yeah. practice, can that totally change everything? I mean, isn't that when you really see what, what you've got? That's your true evaluation when you get pads on. Um, you know, so, you know, I've been in this a long time. And, I, and I've seen guys, man, they look great all the way through this part of the year. And then the pads come on and they mm -hmm. stay on. And it's like pad number four or five in training camp, and then all of a sudden you see a guy slide. It's just because of the physicality of the game. You know, some guys are, are really suited to that, and, and those are the guys who succeed in the NFL. The guys that are not suited to that, they have a harder time, uh, you know, having that you know, long success. Matt, you're you've, you've been around so many quarterbacks just the last two stops, Dallas, obviously with Dak and Indy. Through this stage, what's the potential nature of where Justin is and what you see thus far, given the quarterbacks that you've been a part of working with, mm -hmm. even on the defensive side? Yeah, so uh, I can really probably compare this to Dak the most because he was young like this when I was there um, as a rookie and then a second-year player. Um, and he, we saw him just grow before our eyes. And he's a, he's a talent, you know, he's a, he's a guy that can, you know, throw on time but also make, you know, extended plays and throw down the field. And, and that's where I see you know, where Justin is. And I'm not con trying to compare those two players. They're different players. But, but certainly, you can see the, the jump that we're going to make here with Justin. And, uh, and I can see those things as he starts to mature in the offense. How are you balancing a day like today where you're probably happy your defense got their hands on the football a lot, took the ball away, but maybe Justin was throwing into some tight window sometimes like how are you juggling that your role as head coach looking at both sides oh it's our our team I don't say defense offense you know to me it's it's like I said the offense really did a nice job executing on Monday and then today defense I thought overall did a good job executing so um, when we're playing the game that's going to happen during the course of the game so we understand that and I'll talk to the players about this is that one side during the course of the game might struggle at first or they're playing you know, the, the offense isn't, you know, hey, that's a good football team. Sometimes it's, hey, that team has a really good offense. So our defense is hey, really going to have to step up and play. Well, our offense is going to have to dominate that game and vice versa. Or we're just having a hard time on, you know, playing on defense to start. Well, our offense has got to pick them up. It's the Bears. It's our football team. And the special teams connects it all together. You know, so um, that's just a microcosm of the game, you know, this week right here. Hey, offense played good. And then Defense played good the next day. So I think that's a great learning lesson that, hey, and then when we're, when we're both rolling and we're both hot, guess what? We dominate our opponent. We win the game by, you know, 10 points. Um, but typically in the NFL, you know that it's going to come down to the fourth quarter. It's going to be less than seven. So we got to be ready to go. That's why we're practicing all these situations because that's what it comes down to in this league. Yeah, you had, uh, uh, your, uh, what you were saying about Justin Fields and his improvements and the jump maybe that you are hoping for this year. What have you seen through – some of this on-field work that already looks like improvement from what you had researched coming into this based on his film. Yeah, I would just say that, that, that Luke and Andrew are doing a great job with the footwork and the timing. Um, that's, that, to me, it jumps out. Like, you just ask that question, I just, boom, right there. That's that no question. You see it in the drill work. Than what you had seen on film. Yes, absolutely. You can see it in the drill work. You can see the them taking it from the drill work to the to the you know eleven on eleven reps, and that's clearly getting better. 
Um, so I'm excited about that. You had Jalen Johnson back that first string today. Yeah. Is, that, is that a sign that his conditioning is back to where you wanted it to be? Yeah, we just wanted to see where he was. He, he came in pretty good shape. I mean, he was in good shape when he came in, and we were just, you know, assessing him where he was, and he's done a great job with that. He's learning the defense. You know, it takes him a while, you know, to learn the defense because, you know, he just was coming in. So that takes a couple days to figure out, hey, what what is this call? What is that call? And he's done a great job. And he's he, he played really good today, I thought. Yeah. Matt, Matt, we didn't speak to Tyler Boyd out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you know, this time of year, I'm not commenting on guys that aren't on the field or on the field. So he's in the building, and that's all I can say at this time. Hey, Matt, Matt, given that you guys are new staff and you're installing new systems, is it a big deal to miss out on one OTA practice? Do you consider it something that will impact you guys down the road? Or No, I don't, I don't actually see it as a big deal. What I do see, though, is this. As, as I see, the, uh, our team, our football team, has to be able to adjust, adapt, and overcome and pivot in situations. So, you know, how we handled this situation was awesome. Because our guy's like, okay, that's fine, boom. And then pivot to the next day and boom and go. And that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do that to win games. And that's what I was excited about. So adversity is going to come. It's how you deal with it that matters. Yeah. So obviously, you have mandatory mini camp, but what do you think you learned about this group just through these OTA practices? Have you gotten to know them as well? Um, I would just say they're they're really team oriented guys. Um, excited about that. My and the staff is the same. You know, guys are adjustable. They can move and adjust on the fly. Um, you know, really smart. Uh, the attitude is outstanding. Um, the togetherness. I can feel the team coming together. You know, because we've had great attendance, and got, and I want to thank the players again for that because we're really starting to gel here and create the culture we want to create. Matt, when, when the Bears looked like they were going to sign Larry Ogunjobi, the one thing that was most evident was what a good fit he was for your defense based on what you wanted to do. How does Justin Jones compare? What kind of fit is he, and how much of a transition is this going to be for him coming from the Chargers to, to your defense? No, I, I think it's going to be pretty easy for them because they played a lot of what I call under front, so they set their three technique away from the, the tight end. So he's been playing some three technique. So that, that to me, uh, that's why we really recruited him and brought him here is because we saw the visual uh, uh, evidence on tape that he could do the spot. You know, so he's done a good job with it. It's in a takeoff position. I think it lends to his athletic ability, and he's just going to get better and better and better. So I didn't really see the jump because it was a 3-4 system. A lot of those guys are in under defense. So we really saw it on tape when we recruited him. So. Is, there, is there any way to tell now, like just by what you see now, that that's going to work out like you thought, or, or do you have to make adjustments? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, obviously, I love the athletic ability. I love the man. I love his attitude. He's working super hard. And again, the evaluation will continue to go all the way through training camp. Like we said, when we put the pads on, then we get our true evaluation. But where he is right now, we are extremely excited about that.